Hello and welcome to FPL Mates, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and it's time for our Game Week 19 episode of Buy, Sell, Keep, Avoid. Yes, we are back after not doing an episode in Game Week 18 and in the interest of transparency, I should let you know I am recording this halfway through the 3pm games on Saturday. So apologies for that. Time is just really tight at the moment. So guys, if you do enjoy this one, please do drop a like, do subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get started. So buys are plays you probably don't have but should consider bringing in. Sells are plays you probably have but should consider removing. Keeps are plays that you might be thinking about removing but I think you should keep them. And avoids are players that are pretty hyped up right now but I think they are potential traps that should be avoided. Let's see how we got on in game week 17. So yes, guys, this is the Game Week 17 results. We did not do an episode in Game Week 18. Let's just run for it real quick. So first of all, I should say that the Bournemouth uh, versus Luton game obviously was uh, cancelled out. So those uh, picks are kind of not going to count. Uh, aside from that, though, I guess we got 8 out of 14. I think it, we did probably better than the scoreline suggested. Poro came off. A lot of the cells didn't come off. You know, uh, Johnson and Anderson did poorly. So did Mitzelma. Uh, and Ketiel was benched, but he did get an assist off the bench. Uh, the keeps, Saliba and Sterling did pretty well, I suppose. The one thing here that is kind of annoying about doing these summaries is that I did say avoid Allison and Van Dijk, but I sort of said, like, Allison and Van Dijk are good picks, but they are too expensive compared to Arsenal defenders and Newcastle defenders who you can get probably the same amount of output for a much cheaper price. And lo and behold, the Newcastle and Arsenal defenders and goalkeepers did just as well as the Liverpool guys, but that doesn't mean that the Liverpool guys didn't score points as well. So it's like technically what I said and the points I made in that, that video last time were right, but at the same time, when we look at the scores, technically I was wrong as well. So it's difficult and it's one of the reasons I don't really like doing this summary thing. I think it's a bit of fun, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it gives the full picture of kind of the actual points I'm making during videos but uh, you guys seem to like the summaries anyway so uh, we'll do them uh, regardless and, and uh, hopefully you guys can uh, understand a little bit why we only scored 8 out of 14 when really I don't know I kinda, I'm kind of thinking it's more of a 10 out of 14 which is su not such a bad score but uh, whatever moving on let's, uh, let's get cracking with the game week 19 players so our goalkeeper buy is going to be Raya. I think this is an interesting one. And I don't think there's any goalkeeper that massively stands out to me at the moment. You could go for a Dubravka. You could go for a Leno. You could maybe go for Allison if you really wanted to spend a lot of money. You know, a lot of us have a lot of money in the bank at the moment because of selling Haaland, for example. So there are other goalkeepers to go for. But I think if we're looking at value for money, who has the best fixtures, who has the best defense, Raya does stick out to me at 4.9 million. So he is a goalkeeper I would be looking to go for. Two uh, over two expected clean sheets in his last four fixtures that he's played during 13 to 17. Obviously missed one game against Brentford and a few saves, not too many, but still enough to say, look, this is a decent pick. And I think you are going to be able to uh, really benefit from going in on the Arsenal defence, maybe with an extra player like Raya. If you've got one Arsenal defender already, maybe a goalkeeper would be another good way of getting involved in a defence with good fixtures who are performing well, generally speaking. The one let down was the looting game, three goals conceded in that game. But apart from that anomaly... Arsenal still are tracking really, really nicely when we're looking for those clean sheets. Our other buy is going to be Pedro Porro. Um, Brighton next. I don't think Brighton are quite as good as they have been historically. After that, we've got the likes of Bournemouth, Man United and Brentford teams. Not necessarily in amazing form at the moment, particularly United and Brentford. Uh, so I do think there are clean sheets as a possibility. When you've got Vicario in goal, there's always a chance of clean sheets. But why we like Porro is his attacking output. 14 shots and 16 key passes in the five game weeks between 30 and 17. Those are insane numbers for a defender and fair enough they're not always in the most dangerous positions but this guy is an attacker. He really is and he's listed as defender which is brilliant. Exactly the kind of player we want for FPL. I'm going to put Richarlison down as our midfield buy. I think I probably would have said him last game week as well. I think if we're looking at the midfielders that not a lot of people own right now, Richarlison is by far the standout pick as the kind of player we want to be bringing in. Another goal in game week 19, which we could add to this technically, but we're not going to do it. We're going to do 13 to 17 stats, but still another goal in game week 18 as well. So he's clearly doing very, very well at the moment. Uh, he's in great form. He's probably going to be on penalties when Son leaves for the A 
Asian Cup in Game Week 21. So you're going to get a Richarlison on penalties as well. Lots of good reasons to like Richarlison. He's just a player in great form, really, really coming together, found his the right position in that Spurs team, and he's outscoring many of the other Spurs players and a lot of the other midfielders in general as well. So really a player that a lot of people are kind of skipping, missing out on, probably looking too much historically what Richarlison has been like. This is a new Richarlison. He's playing a new position, new system. Everything is good for him right now. Listed as a midfielder, playing striker. What is not to love? And of course, Solanke is going to come in as our forward buy here as well. He is just doing so well for his price. 6.9 million still. That is a very good value for money for a player who is just getting such so many opportunities to score goals. He really is the center point of all of the attacks at Bournemouth. He has kind of gone from a little bit of a creative kind of striker to an out-and-out -out striker now, which is really, really good stuff. Bournemouth finally clicking a little bit more in attack, which is very good to see. I just think this is a, it's just a great pick in general, and I don't think anyone will probably disagree with me on that one. I think we'll probably all agree that if you were to buy a new forward this week, it's going to be Slanky. The only exception if, is maybe if uh, Erling Haaland, for example, if he is declared fit for game week 19, you maybe you maybe prioritise Haaland over Slanky, but both great picks regardless. Uh, really, really like Slanky for this Fulham at home game for sure. After that, I don't think the fixes are terrible either. They're okay. Uh, it was certainly good enough for him to get some results. Our uh, goalkeeper cell is going to be Onana. Struggled with this one a little bit, to be fair, but we are going to go Onana. I, I think the Aston Villa game is always going to be a toughie. We've got Spurs coming up in a couple of weeks as well. And just Manchester United are just, just not in a good position right now. I just would not want to be owning any of their players in their current state. I really wouldn't, which is just kind of unfortunate. Uh, they're just not competing really where we hoped or would, would have thought that they would. Uh, but yeah, Onana has kept a few clean sheets recently. Don't get me wrong. And he has made plenty of saves, but... You look at these numbers, you know, 10.61 expected goals conceded in uh, between game week 13 and 17. Another two goals conceded uh, today on Saturday as well against West Ham. It's you, you can tell that United are conceding a lot of chances and maybe for a, for a period of time, United were able to keep a few clean sheets, maybe got away with it a little bit, but I can't see that really happening long term, particularly when you're up against elite attacks like Villa and Spurs. And we're going to put Matty Cash as our sell for a defender. There's no more reasons to own him anymore. We've run out of, I've run out of excuses to, to argue why you should keep Cash. Um, you know, he uh, obviously is suspended for this game week after picking up another yellow card. I can't see him being a regular starter after this as well. As soon as Pal Torres is back, and I think he, there's a chance he'll be back for game week 17 anyway, uh, certainly uh, by game week 19 anyway, certainly by game week 20, Pal Torres is going to be back and, and suddenly Cash is going to be back out of the team again. So uh, by the time we get to that Burnley game, which you might be tempted to hold Cash ready for Burnley at home, I just don't think it's worth it, really. I don't think it's worth it. Uh, sell Cash, get rid of him. He is uh, he's unfortunately done. He's trolled us enough this FBL season. There's no more reasons to keep Kaoru Mitsuma is also going to be a sell this game week. Really disappointing from him lately and uh, in Brighton in general. Just a really disappointing team. They just haven't been the team they were last season, which is super, super upsetting. But uh, no dramas, just a player that we can quite easily sell, I think. Uh, the results just haven't been there. Rotation is incredibly heavy and he might even have an injury for game week 19 as well. So yeah, get rid if you still have him in your team. He was an early season, like game week one hype player. Now, no more. He is that he has done as an FBL asset for now at least. And also, this one's a bit controversial, but I'm also going to sell, say, sell Callum Wilson. And the reason is he's played 90 minutes for like how many times? Four or five times in the last 10 days. It's ridiculous how many minutes Callum Wilson has played after just coming back from injury. The reason he's been doing that is because they've been trying to uh, hold off on bringing Izak back into the team. But Izak did make a return to the bench and coming off the bench to play some minutes in Game Week 18, which does suggest to me that Wilson is finally going to get his rest in a few days' time in Game Week 19. And, and man, he really, really is going to need it as well. He's it's just... it's. It's just not right. It's not normal to see Wilson playing this many minutes all in a row when Newcastle do now have two fit strikers. So I do think Wilson is going to be benched for that Forest game. After that, he's probably going to be rotated in and out of the team a little bit. And it's just going to be a you know a rotation headache when it comes to those Newcastle forwards. So I would just look to sell him now. He is going to be a headache player to own moving forward, starting from game week 19. And I just wouldn't want to deal with that. Isaac's a more interesting one. I do think Isaac is is going to start in game week 19. Now he has had that bench appearance. I think that's enough confidence to say Izak is probably going to start against Forest now. I don't know that for sure. There's never any guarantees in football, but 
I wouldn't be taking a risk on either of those players, Wilson or Isaac. Wouldn't be looking to buy either of them, and I would consider selling Isaac even. But I think Wilson is a more of a priority sell this game week than Isaac is. So yeah, move him out, get yourself a Solanke, bring Holland back in your t back into your team. Whatever you want to do, I think the Newcastle strikers are just going to be an absolute nightmare <laughs> from here on. Not a place I would want to go. I think if you've held Edison for this long, you should probably just hold on to him for a little bit more. I mean, we've got Everton next, but then Sheffield United at home. We've got Burnley at home in a couple of weeks after that as well. And we know Man City are going to have a double game week, including that, uh, that, uh, that postponed Brentford fixture. That's going to come up soon as well. So I think there is a lot of reason, particularly if we get double game week information, if you've held Edison for this long... I think you may as well keep him at this point. I mean, he's been unfortunate to not keep any clean sheets. Man City have been unfortunate in general not to keep clean sheets, but they're going to come eventually, right? Surely. Certainly wouldn't be buying Edison. I think 5.5 million is way too expensive, but if you have him, keep him. Uh, also going to say keep Kieran Trippier. Another disappointing result uh, against Luton Town, or so the game so far seems to be. Uh, so obviously Luton scored early against Newcastle, so no clean sheet there, and uh, it's disappointing. A lot of people will be looking to sell uh, their Newcastle defenders, particularly Trippier, because he is so expensive, but I would look to hold on to him for one more game week, and then you can think about removing him after that when uh, Newcastle play face Liverpool City and Aston Villa in a row. Three super, super strong attack so yeah would be uh would be, think about it then but for this game week home against Nottingham Forest it's a really really nice fixture it's a home game Newcastle much better at home as well I would hold on to him for one more week if you can I really really would just just one more roll of the dice before Trippier and then you can decide what you want to do with him after that People are selling Jared Bowen and people were even, you know, before the game week 18 deadline, people were talking about selling Jared Bowen and I thought they were crazy then and still more people are selling him now. I think, I still think they're crazy. I do understand a, a, to a degree, like would I buy Bowen ahead of Arsenal away? No, I don't think I would. I would wait one more game week or, you know, if you are looking to sell Salah or Son in game week 21, well, that's the same game week Bowen plays against Sheffield United. So again, I think that's a really, really obvious transfer to do that then as well. So I think Bowen very, very soon is going to become an essential player, a player we're all bringing in, a player that we all want in our team. So if you already have him, there's no way I would be selling him. I'm actually very jealous of you guys who have Bowen in your team at the moment. I think he's an absolutely fabulous FPL asset. I'm, I'm very, very uh, envious. So uh, yeah, if you have him, You've got to keep him. He's going he's to be so good for you. He already has been so good for you. And it's going to continue. And I would also, if you have kept Erling Haaland for this long, I would keep him. He is the number one most sold forward in FPL after the Game Week 18 deadline, ahead of the Game Week 19 deadline. A lot of people are selling him because of his injury, because of his blank Game Week. But that's in the past now. And Haaland been picked to training. Hopefully, we are moving towards him starting again. Is he necessarily going to start against Everton? Not necessarily. But... At this point, you know, I think he's going to be good for that Sheffield United at home game. And you're going to want to be captaining him for that game as well. So there's just no way I would sell him at this point. If you were going to sell him, you should have done it last game week at the absolute latest. Ideally, the game week before, really. So, uh, yeah, still have him. Keep him. Because I know, personally, I'm going to be looking to bring him back again. Another player, people are selling them. But actually, these are players you're going to want in the very near future. Now, this is another situation where me doing the summaries is probably going to screw me over uh, when we look at the summary of the previous game week score. Because if Haaland doesn't start this game week and he scores zero or one points if he gets a bench appearance maybe then it's gonna look like I'm being stupid but I can't emphasize enough I'm not saying Holland is a buy necessarily I'm not saying he is a must-have but if you already have him there are lots of reasons outside of him necessarily being guaranteed to start to keep him and that's kind of the point I'm making here so uh yeah uh let's uh let's wait and see see what happens in the next game week's uh, review but yeah, hopefully you guys can cut me a little bit of slack on that one. And finally, some avoids. We're going to go double Everton defence for the avoids this game week because I think the Man City and Aston Villa games coming up in the next three are just tough. And I think Wolves away is a little bit tough as well. So I would not be looking to invest in the uh, Everton defence at this point, which is interesting. Pickford is actually the most transferred in goalkeeper at time of recording for game week 19. And Tarkovsky is up there in terms of defenders as well. I think he's the fourth or fifth most popular transfer in among defenders. So these are really popular the picks people are trying to pick these players up i just can't see myself doing this when they're about to play man city it's just like it's a classic thing it's one of like the cardinal rules of fpl is that you don't bring in defensive players in the exact game week that they're going to play man city you just wait 
till the Man City fixture is out of the way before you talk about them again. So I think wait one more game week if you are looking to get Everton defenders. I think whatever you've got right now probably has just as much chance of a clean sheet as your Everton defenders against Man City. So we'd look, be looking to avoid Pickford, would be looking to avoid Tarkovsky this week. But definitely think there's going to be some conversation around these players in the near future. And I think this is where we peak for controversy for this episode because I'm going to say avoid Kudus. And please hear me out on this one because I know he's going to be a super hyped pick for this game week. So there's two reasons. Reason number one, we're about to play Arsenal away from home. That is a tough, tough fixture for West Ham and their attackers. It's the this toughest fixture an attacker can play really at the moment, Arsenal away. They are really a tough defence to crack. So I wouldn't think we were guaranteed points there really with, with Kudus. But... There is a bigger point in hand. And after the Arsenal game, after the Brighton game, which is an okay fixture, but not an amazing fixture, we are going to see Kudus, a Ghanaian international, disappear off to the African Cup of Nations. So we've only got Kudus for two more game weeks before he is going to be AWOL for two, three, four, possibly five game weeks. So that's not ideal. It really, really is it. It's just kind of, it just seems a little bit silly to me to bring in Kudus for a tough fixture against Arsenal, uh, average fixture against Brighton, and then you're going to have to sell him again anyway. So at least with Bowen, I think, you know, you've got him for the long term. You know he's going to be in your team for the long term. With Kudus, he can't give you that. He can't give you that same thing. So look, if people want to play the super short term game or if they're planning a, uh, a wild card super early, maybe a game week 21 wild card, there are going to be exceptions to this anyway and if you really think Kudus is going to absolutely dominate more so than other midfielders over the next two game weeks then again fair enough but if you are looking to buy a West Ham midfielder I would just spend the extra money and go for Jared Bowen right now I know it's tempted to go for Kudus but I think in the long term you will actually regret going for him and this is an interesting one we'll put Nkunku down as an avoid as well and the reason is that I'm putting him in here is because I haven't really had an opportunity to talk about Nkunku at length in a video and here's the player I'm being asked about more than anyone over the last week or so everyone is talking about Nkunku should we buy Nkunku is he the greatest pick ever should we buy him let's get him in right now and I have been saying in streams and when replying to comments no, do not buy Nkunku yet. It's not time. Please be patient. I know we're excited about this pick, but it's just not time yet to go for him. And the, the reason is that he's going to be eased into the, the Chelsea team. He's going to happen slowly. We've seen, well, po Pochettino has kind of already said it, essentially. Um, he hasn't played in game week 19 yet at time of recording, but Pochettino has, has, has pretty much come out and said, yeah, Nkunku is not going to start this game. He is not ready yet. You know, he's come back from a long injury. We need to settle him into the team, you know. So it's it's it's, it's a tough situation for Nkunku. I'm sure when he gets a few games under his belt, he's going to be ready to play and he's going to play well. But not only does he need to slowly come back from this injury, but also he needs to bed in with a Chelsea team. They're actually doing quite well in attack at the moment. I don't think he is just automatically and instantly going to be the star man at Chelsea. It's probably going to happen eventually. He's a quality, quality player. But I think we just all need to have a little bit more patience with this one and give Nkunku the patience that he deserves, really. We can't expect too much from him straight away. And I don't even know if he starts against Crystal Palace either. Even if he does start against Crystal Palace, what are we looking at? We're looking like 50, 60 minutes of football. He's not going to play the full game there, is he? After that, if we can see that Nkunku gets a start against Crystal Palace, at that point, I will say, okay, Let's start talking about him. But I want him to get a start before he becomes a serious consideration. But for now, not feeling it. Just would not go for Nkunku yet. I know you guys are excited. I'm excited as well. But sometimes you just need to pull yourself back and kind of look at the bigger picture and kind of understand that, that uh, you know, things take time. Things take time. And Nkunku is going to take, uh, you know, a few more game weeks. And that's fine. That's fine. But when he arrives, I think he is going to arrive. We'll wait for that soon. So yes, guys, apologies that I couldn't include the data from Game Week 18 this week. Like I say, I'm recording this video a little bit early because I do have a lot of things to do, a lot of things going on. It's a really busy time of year, so it's difficult to try and squeeze the videos in. So I'm recording where I can, but hopefully you guys can understand that. In general, I would be waiting until after the games have finished, obviously, before making a transfer, see if there's any new injury news. And hopefully by the 26th, uh, we are going to be uh, talking about uh, what players we want to bring in. But yeah, let's see what happens there. Uh, patience on the injured players and I include players like De Bruyne in that as well you guys are hyped about De Bruyne I get it patience again for that one but the big question is going to be Erling Haaland will he be ready or not and I'm looking forward to talking a bit more about that in some videos much closer to the deadline but aside from that let's uh, let's wrap it up 
Guys, if you enjoyed this one, make sure you do drop a like. Do subscribe if you are new around here as well. And don't forget to check out yesterday's video where we made a, a wild card team. But we also talk, talk a lot about Asia Cup and AFCON strategy in there. And I think it's going to be useful uh, for not just for wild carders, but also for all FPL managers who are looking to build a really, really strong FPL team. So go check that video out. I think you're going to enjoy it. But aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Once again, catch you tomorrow for another video and maybe even a stream. And I'll see you later, mates. Bye-bye.